Good morning, my brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tony. And today is the first day I'm starting my new mission from the Lord. I just put a video out uh, yesterday and letting you know what I'm going to be doing is just reading from the Word. And so we're going to be starting that today. So get out your Bible. I hope you're ready to be enlightened by the Word of the Lord. And we're going to be starting in the New Covenant, the New Testament. So we're going to start with the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. And like I said yesterday in my video, um, I'm going to be reading from the Hallelujah Scriptures. And in this version, there are some words you will not be familiar with right off the bat. And um, I will explain those as we go. Okay? So, uh, like I said yesterday, um, the word for the Lord is Yahweh. And the word for Jesus is Yeshua. Now, these are Hebrew words. Ancient Aramaic Hebrew words. Uh, most of this version, if not pretty much all of it, is in English, except when you are referring to the Lord or Jesus or angels or heaven. There are about, I would say, 10 or 20 words that, um, that they left in Aramaic Hebrew. And uh, I imagine just out of sheer respect. Um, Things can be lost in translation and have been lost in translation over the last couple thousand years. And so we just want to make sure that we are getting the exactly what the Lord intended us to get. You know. So anyway, without further ado, let's start our Bible lesson for today. Like I said, we're going to be starting in the book of Matthew, also known as Marathiahu in Hebrew. Chapter 1, the book of the genealogy of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. Now Abraham brought forth Yitzhak, and Yitzhak brought forth Yahakob, and Yahakob brought forth Yehuda and his brothers, and Yehuda brought forth Peretz and Zerah by Tamer. And Peretz brought forth Hetzron, and Hetzron brought forth Ram. And Ram brought forth Amadibadab, and Amadibadab brought forth Nashon, and Nashon brought forth Solomon. Verse 5. And Solomon brought forth Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz brought forth Obeyed by Ruth, and Obeyed brought forth Yicha, and Yicha brought forth David, the sovereign, who was King David, and David, the sovereign, brought forth Shaloma by Uriah's wife, and Shaloma brought forth Rehabam, and Rehabam brought forth Abaya. And Abiah brought forth Asa. And Asa brought forth Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat brought forth Yoram. And Yoram brought forth Uzziah. Verse 9. And Uzziah brought forth Yotham. And Yotham brought forth Ahaz. And Ahaz brought forth Hitzakahu. And Hitzakahu brought forth Manasheha. And Manasheha brought forth Amon. And Amen brought forth Yoshiyahu. And Yoshiyahu brought forth Yekonia and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babel. Verse 12. And after the exile to Babel, Yekonia brought forth Shealatiel. And Shealatiel brought forth Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel brought forth Abihud. And Abiud brought forth Elakim, and Elakim brought forth Azor. 
And Azor brought forth Tzadok, and Tzadok brought forth Akim, and Akim brought forth Elihud. Verse 15. Now, we're going through the genealogy of Jesus right now. And like I said, this version is, is, has given us the true names of these men, not the translated names into English. So I understand right now it's, it can be a bit frustrating, but um, bear with me. We're almost there. And Elihud, verse 15, and Elihud brought forth Elazar, and Elazar brought forth Matan, and Matan brought forth Yahakob, which is Jacob. And Yahakob brought forth Yosef, Joseph, the mother of Miriam, Mary, of whom was born Yeshua, who is called Mashiach. Mashiach means Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And from David until the exile to Babel were 14 generations. And from the exile to Babel until Mashiach the Christ were 14 generations. You see, the Lord is very precise. Verse 18, And the birth of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior Jesus, was as follows. After his mother Miriam was engaged to Yosef, before they came together, she was found to be pregnant from the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the Holy Spirit. Kodesh is holy, Ruach, spirit. The Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, And Yosef, her husband, being a righteous man, and not wanting to make a show of her, had in mind to put her away secretly. He was going to divorce her in secret. But while he thought about this, see, a messenger of Yehovah. Is God appeared to him in a dream, saying, Yosef, son of David, do not be afraid to take Miriam as your wife, for that which is in her was brought forth from the Ruach HaKodesh. You see, the angel told Mary, The child that you're carrying was brought forth to you by the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, and she shall give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. You see, Jesus saves us from our sins. Without him, we got nothing. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to the Father. Verse 22, and all this came to be in order to fill what was spoken by Yahweh through the Nabi, the prophets, saying, See, a maiden shall conceive, she shall give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translates El with us. And Yosef, awakening from his sleep, did as the messenger of Yahweh commanded him, and he took his wife, but knew her not until she gave birth to her son, the firstborn. And he called his name Yeshua. You see, Jesus was the firstborn son of Joseph and Mary, and we know you know, from later on in the Bible, Jesus had um, at least two brothers and two sisters that we know of. So there was at least five of them in that family. Jesus was the firstborn. You see, in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, the firstborn was the sacrifice. The firstborn lamb was the sacrificial lamb. The firstborn heifer was the sacrificial heifer. Jesus 
was the firstborn. He was the sacrificial lamb to die for all of our sins. I'm thinking about maybe keeping this short and sweet. No, no, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Chapter 2. In Yeshua, having been born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of Herod, the sovereign, C, Magi, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born sovereign of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to do reverence to him. Verse 3. Now let me just pause real quick and take a break. Um, I hope you're following along in your Bible, or if you're listening, that's okay. But as you can tell just already, we're only in chapter 1 of Matthew. The wording is different, right? Uh, there are a few things that are different. And that's because this is the closest to the original ancient Aramaic Hebrew manuscripts that we've got. You see, when the King James Version was written, it was written so that we, or they, I should say, could understand it better, they could read it better, and it was written in the proper King's English. So, wording has changed, some things are changed, but this is as close as you can get to the original Aramaic Hebrew version. Anyway, chapter 2, verse 3. And Herod, the sovereign, having heard, was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, Jerusalem. And having gathered all the chief Kohanim, which is the priests, and scribes of the people together, he asked them where Hamashiach was to be born. You know, he asked them where was the Christ meant to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judah. For thus it has been written by the prophets. You see, Back in the Old Testament, the prophets foretold of Jesus' birth. And they knew where he was going to be born. They said he's going to be born in Judah. He's going to be born in Bethlehem. Southern Bethlehem. There's two Bethlehems. There's one in the northern kingdom, one in the southern kingdom. So they even specifically said that. He's going to be born in the southern kingdom, the southern Bethlehem, in the kingdom of Judah. Verse 6, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah... You are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people, Yisrael. Then Herod, having called the Magi secretly, learned exactly from them what time the star appeared. And having sent them to Bethlehem, he said, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you found him, bring him back, bring back word to me so that I too might go and do reverence to him, pay respects to him. And having heard the sovereign, they went and see the star which they had seen in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the child was. And seeing the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly glad joy. And coming into the house, they saw the child with Miriam, his mother, and they fell down and did reverence to him. And opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country by another way. You see, Herod, he didn't want to pay respects to Jesus. He wanted to kill the child. He did not want anybody or anything to challenge his power as king. And he knew if this child was born, he was the chosen king. But anyway, the Magi were told in a dream, don't go back to Herod, return to your own homeland and go away. And so they did. Verse 13, And when they had left, see a messenger of Yahweh, which is an angel, appeared to Yosef in a dream, saying, Arise, 
take the child and his mother and flee to Mitzrayim and remain there until I bring you word. For Herod is about to seek the child to destroy him. And rising up, he took the child and his mother by night and departed from Mitzrayim and remained there until the death of Herod to fill what was spoken by Yehovah through the prophet, saying, Out of Mitzrayim I have, I have called my son. Verse 16, Then Herod, having seen that he was fooled by the Magi, was greatly enraged, and he sent forth and slew all the male children of Bethlehem in all its borders. From two years old and under, according to, according to the time which he had exactly learnt from the Magi. Can you imagine the fury that was inside this person? He was so furious and so jealous and he did not want his, his, his authority and his power challenged. He killed every male that was born in that area under two years and under. What a shame. Then was filled by the then was filled what was spoken by Yirmayahu the prophet, saying, verse 18, A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they were no more. Verse 19, And Herod, having died, see, a messenger of Yehovah appeared in a dream to Yosef, in Mitzrayim, saying, Arise, take the child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for those seeking the life of the children are dead. And rising up, he took the child and his mother, and he came into the land of Israel. But hearing that Archelaus was reigning over Judah instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And having been warmed in a dream, he departed to the parts of Galilee and came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, thus to fill what was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. You see, with the Lord there are no coincidences, there are no happenstances, stuff just doesn't happen random. All of this was prophesied and it all happened exactly as the Lord wanted it to. And you can be darn sure if the Lord wants something to happen, it will happen exactly in the way he wants to. Family, I love you. It's been a pleasure reading the word with you today. We got through Matthew's chapter one and chapter two. And um, as we continue reading the word, you will get used to this version. And um, I remember the first time I read this version, I had to read it right next to uh, a King James version or an NIV or an NKJV version because I was, you know, I, I had to keep going back and forth going, okay, 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 now he's saying this and what does this mean? Now he's saying this, and what does this mean? Now I'm to the point where I can just read this version and, and I get it. So I would recommend that you, at least for a while, um, read along with me in your own version that you're most comfortable with. And um, it will become second nature reading this version to you. And I'm, I'm sure you'll be blessed by it. So anyway, family of God, until tomorrow, may the Lord bless you and cover you with his peace and safety, his grace and mercy, because he loves you. All praise to the King Jesus. Amen.